Today, our topic is about dealing, same uh, idea, dealing with peer pressure, peer pressure. And this is found in the book of 1 John chapter 1, verses 2 to chapter 1, chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. This topic gives us like steadfastness or peer pressure, how to overcome and how to deal peer pressure. It doesn't mean that this is like targeting young people nowadays, but this is also relevant to each and every one of us, not just adult. We're not saying and dividing every message that ah, these are only for adults and this only for the kids. No, this is all for everyone, for everybody, because we believe that all of us will be able to help our young people and even our parents if we are young people. And this will give us like a glimpse of how to live out the faith that we have received from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let's dive in and read this wonderful passage. Three verses. So if it is okay with you, please stand momentarily as we read these verses. Just follow on the screen. Hallelujah. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If you love the world, the love of our uh, love of the sorry, if anyone loves the world. The love of the Father, loves the word, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life comes from, comes from, the, not from the Father, but from the world. 17. The world and its desires passed away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to face-to-face -face be with your word. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you will illumine our minds and open our hearts and so that we will be able to see your will upon each and every one of us. Thank you for this wonderful time. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Take your seats, folks. Thank you so much. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As, as mentioned, this week we will examine exactly what sets apart the peer, peer pressure of the incoming generation. And before coming here in Canada, it's always my desire to reach out young people. I've been in the ministry for like since 1999 and I'm, I'm thankful to God for giving us the young people. And to be specific, I think I mentioned to you that the time we have in, in the ministry was I was able to officiate the wedding of our young people then and then after a while I was able to dedicate their first child oh no no baby like baby shower are you familiar with baby shower I was able to attend and pray for the baby shower of that couple and then after a while I was there dedicating their their the first child my goodness and seven years later i was able to attend the seventh birthday of that child so it doesn't mean that i'm old but i was what i'm saying is i've witnessed those things especially while even my with my wife uh, she, she worked at like young people for more than 18 years Myself, to be specific, since 1999. I'm not pointing of these years as my criteria, but what I'm saying is I've seen those habits and pressures and things like that when it comes to young people. And I've talked to adults as well, to parents, like, Pastor, can you please help us how to... Uh, to my, my son, my, my daughter is like this and like that. And we feel that pressure as well even as leaders in the church. And as far as understanding these scenarios and problems and things like that that we normally experience, when we say we parents and kids experience, we have to really look at the scripture. And as we look at the scripture, the Lord will show us the understanding of what it means to really embrace pressure. Not just one level of spirituality, but also all ages. Meaning you see yourself and you see others as well 
their situation so that we will be able to understand and in purpose, we will be able to disciple and do the right thing, especially when it comes to our spirituality. The purpose of this message is for us to disciple well our young people and younger generation. I'm not speaking just again, when I say young people, not referring only to high school or college or young professional, but I think even the kids, they will, like this, four years old up, they will also be experiencing this peer pressure. And when we understand this, it will be applicable, not just to them, but for every one of us. Hallelujah. And uh, like peer pressure is far from you, there are certain aspects of peer pressure for this generation that is really set apart. And again, it has much to do with the available amounts even nowadays. Uh, back in the days, I think I've been mentioning last, last Sunday about the way my father disciplined me. And then we always say back in our days, during our time, we were disciplined like this. But now, like I think it's hard to discipline. It's hard to disciple. By the way, did you know that discipline came from the word disciple, discipleship? Which means following. So when you discipline, that's part of discipleship and training. And that's understandable as well. So when we apply the pressure of discipling the next generation, there is this commotion between our style and the pressure that we get from the social media or the world. And there are numerous individuals like uh, professionals who came up with the definition of what is peer pressure. And according to them, they made this declaration and understanding the process by which members of the same social group influence other members to do things that they may be hesitant uh, or might not otherwise choose to do so. Like, for example, you have uh, friends who usually play uh, games in cell phone. I, I don't know about games. ML? What's ML? Mobile Legends or a lot of games. And then if you don't do that, you're not part of the group. For example, you play basketball. If you don't play basketball, you are out of the group. So you're being pressured to join us so that you will be part of the group and you will not feel that peer pressure. And my son experienced that. Even my daughter experienced that. And we experienced that as well. During my time, my high school days and even college days, I experienced peer pressure literally. Like trying to be in the group, but I couldn't because I'm not that person because I'm into church. And it's hard. It's hard to just literally... Uh, like be part of the group and if we were not aware if we're not cautious about those things or these particular things we will find and see ourselves or see our kids as well or you as young people to a situation wherein you're alone and your that's anxiety or depression or things like that comes in into our mind hallelujah out of the survey they have this understanding that out of 356 students pulled students who were reported mild to strong exposure to peer pressure. Imagine this 55.6%, but 47.7% reported no exposure to peer pressure within the context of parties. I mean, it's self-explanatory. Approximately 70% of students feel pressure from social media. Like when you post something in Facebook and Instagram, like you, you have to gather like 100 likes or views so that you will be like in, in within the pressure, within social media. And it's kind of diff hard and difficult. This motion, this thing, especially the 77.2, students reported peer pressure from their friends. And another 47.7 reported academic pressure that you have to be, you have to excel. You have to, why do you have that kind of grade? You have to excel because your tita, my uncle, your uncle, your, your niece, your brother is like this. You have to do like this. And these are pre pressure coming from social media, even coming from us parents. 
And without understanding them what they feel, we will fail to really teach them and disciple them in such a way that God wants them to be. So that's why, brothers and sisters, regardless, these lives on display are look to us both realistic and even idealistic when it comes to the reality of what's happening. In other words, the vast majority of even Canadians, Americans, and even Filipinos all over the world, like even adolescents are on the daily basis consuming fire host of images, videos, and ideas about their lives of other people. And they are constantly following other people so that they would be like not feel that peer pressure so that they will imitate what they're doing so that they can adjust well. And I experienced that as well when I was with my daughter. This is again 30% of all pastor's illustration comes from his kids. <laughs> yeah. I experienced when I was struggling with having into another relationship after my first wife died. And then my first wife died 2006. And I was really struggling during those days in the ministry. And somebody's pressuring me to, <laughs> to get a wife. Somebody's pressuring me because of Shine, because of my daughter. Why? Why is that? Because she's, she's a girl. What do you mean? Because she's a girl. You have to find a wife. Uh, no, I don't need a wife. <laughs> because I was doing ministry. And then all of, because my, my mom and a lot of friends in the Philippines were, were into us doing the things. I was really feeling that pressure to understand those things. And like, because especially when Shine reached 10 years old, and then here comes the adolescent stage. And I don't know what to do because I am, I am a man. I don't know, like especially the changes of changes of body and being adolescents and teens and everything's like that. And here comes the monthly, monthly thing for the girls. I was really shocked and don't know what to do. <laughs> and rightly decided, no, no, I'm just kidding. But anyway, uh, all of a sudden, God, God allowed me to overcome those peer pressure and decided to express my love to my wife. <laughs> and then we got married. What I'm saying is I was, I was able to overcome those pressures from my peers, from my friends to get married right away, like a year after. <laughs> and it's really hard. It's not that easy. But what I'm saying is it's real, the peer pressure, especially nowadays, especially with the presence of social media. You're still single? You're still, why are you still not in college? Why are you not still in job? Why, why are you still doing what you're doing? You're supposed to be doing these things. And when you compare these realities, especially young people, they're experiencing it, that peer pressure kicks in. So that's why as far as this dealing peer pressure is concerned, we are into an understanding that the problem only worsens when one tails into consideration of elements, immediately feedback, and even like display all over the world. And our desire is to just understand peer pressure like a thing any one of us will experience it at one time or another. We experience that. I experience that. However, Never before has it been so great in its power to access to the entire population nowadays because of the presence of social media. And all of us, it's helpful to remember that even those of us, hallelujah, who are not digital natives, not active in social media or Facebook, are still attached in the heap to our devices and feedback they provide us. So that's why humbling ourselves and realizing our own vulnerability to this reality can help us relate to what things. Just understanding, like, not just giving time. Last time we talked about time. Not just be with them. My daughter would always say, Daddy, play with me. And then, okay, I'll go beside you. I'm holding my phone. No, Daddy, don't hold your phone. Play with me. Don't go beside me. Play with me. Just imagine four years old then, my, because we were alone in our house, and then I was just 
not busy in my phone, but just maximizing my time. <laughs> maximizing my time. Yeah, I'm trying to maximize my time using my cell phone. And my daughter was doing something and she said, play with me. I'm here with you. No, don't just go beside me. Play with me. So he was liter she was literally saying, Let's, I mean, get down on your phone. Just let go of the phone and play with me. And that's also the essence of dealing with peer pressure. This is not just coming to our, like, with our kids and be with them, but literally listening and understanding what they feel so that they will be able to understand and deal with it in a proper perspective. Hallelujah. And as far as peer pressure is concerned, the God, is, God is giving us a scripture that is great to deal this consideration of associating a disciple of Jesus, especially this, this wonderful passage. Hallelujah. And the highlight of this is that in, our, in this particular context, it's great severity and the distinction between the worldly desires and the love of the Father. It's a contrast between the two. And if we fail to address what is what's need to be addressed, we will not just deal the peer pressure, but also also ultimately fail to do the will of God. So that's why this morning, folks, I'll be sharing two important principles in relation to dealing this peer pressure so that as we understand this is a perspective of a parent and a young people, we will be able to address it. And if we don't, we're not, we don't have that kind of peer pressure within our, inside our home or in, in, within our hearts, that we can help others as well who's dealing with this peer pressure. First is do not love the world. In order for us to deal with the peer pressure, understanding from the scripture, or probably I could give you research about how to overcome peer pressure. But because I'm a pastor, I'm just giving you the principle of the Word of God. And this is the most powerful statement that we could, when we say statement or principle, that we could address to deal the peer pressure that young people nowadays are dealing. Again, again, do not love the world. That's clear there in the scripture. It says there, do not love the world. Do not love the world or anything in the world. Here, John has told us that if we walk in sin's darkness and claim to be in fellowship with God, we are lying. This principle, especially in 1 John, the context here, John was encouraging these believers who were living a double-sided, double mind or double lives. They are worshiping the Lord, but on the other hand, they are compromising to the ways of the world. So that's why the direct statement that John told to these Christians, struggling Christians, was do not love the world. He points out a specific area of sin that specially threatens our fellowship with God. When, they, when, when John said do not love the world, he was saying to these believers that separate yourself. I mean, don't be pressured by the things of the world and ultimately embrace them. Do not love the world, meaning separate yourself. That's the idea of holiness. Means you separate yourself, not loving the ways of the world. I mean, the world in a sense, especially in the book of John, you will notice that the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of John, John, and then 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, and even in the book of Revelation, this same author, again, same author, the gospel, the epistles, and the apocalypse in the Bible. The author is John the Beloved. He is so fond of using the world, the word world, cosmos in original Greek. It means that he's into that. The, the message that he's trying to imply is leaving out the message that we have received and not neglecting the reality of living in this world. So that's why we, re we read John 3.16, right? John 3.16, uh, for God to love the world and a lot of words. In fact, in the book of John, the gospel of the Lord Jesus, according to John, there were uh, 
used of the world word world more than 25 times in the official 16 times in the book of revelation like 12 times just the world the world the word world to emphasize a very important principle that this is reality we we don't need to ex escape the world or leave the world but we need to live here we need to we need to live here we just not do our normal lives but as christians in order for us not to feel the pressure of the world we don't need to love it do not love the world again the essence here is that just instead of the community of sinful humanity that is united in rebellion against god meaning when you love the world you are into the pressures of the world meaning you embrace what the world usually does especially nowadays i'm speaking especially to young people listen to this because when i say this i've experienced this brothers and sisters and we always say this to our young people back in the philippines and i'm saying this to our young people nowadays that if you listen to your parents that's wisdom if you listen to your parents that's that with that is wisdom because you will not have that kind of opportunity if you if they're already gone but if you listen to them that's wisdom that's the part of the scripture in the book of proverbs in the book of ecclesiastes that's the words of the teacher not just plain words of the teacher that is the word of god and understanding when they when you have something when you have a problem when you are feeling that kind of pressure don't go to social media don't post it you go to your parents you go to your yes you go to your parents right away um tell them that you're you're, you're in love is that possible tell them that you're heartbroken tell them that somebody did something wrong to you yes you can say that don't don't make it as your own just share it with your parents because they would understand it and they will for sure because they're your parents amen but if you're not comfortable with that just be comfortable next time because they are still your parents they are still our parents and as far as experience is concerned these are wisdom especially our moms this is not mother's day but especially our moms when they say something though it's elaborated <laughs> you say elaborated father has just, just just five words and then mothers has 20 plus words but they are wisdom don't get me wrong mothers and but they are wisdom we we'll say it has knowledge and wisdom because they knew it right away because of their their capability to overthink <laughs> their capability of seeing things like don't google it just go to your moms go to your parents and they will love it again don't go to the world social media nowadays would always invite us to share our thoughts what's in your mind you can share it but uh, i think we've talked about two years ago in our online thing about how to maximize the social media how to become a relevant christian especially when we see ourselves in our like facebook and everything you don't just post for the sake of posting it you just post for the sake of encouraging other people not just to update them with your life but also encouraging them and as far as engaging with this reality of social media we are into it we're not saying that if we are in that we are loving the world no if we are into it we need to maximize and make every effort as if that we are doing the will of god and not just loving it or doing it for the sake of doing hallelujah and this is the first examples of this idea of the world like the bible helps us to understand this point that even in as far as Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11 is the Tower of Babel wherein they're trying to love the creation and they would do what, whatever they wanted to do during those times. As in, they're just trying to be like God and they came up with a tower wherein they were able to reach heaven and then God confused them. And that the idea, the story of Tower of Babel shows us that the world system as is impressive impressive and winning as it appears to be will never 
ever win out over God. This world, for sure, it's not eternal. So that's why as far as not loving the world, let us not just invest to this world because this everything that we invest to the world will not be eternal. It's just limited. It's just temporary. So that's why instead of loving the world or anything in the world, hallelujah, we will just do the right thing. Momentary, we'll try to look that. To understand further about loving the world, one commentator said, Loving the world is a secular anti-God or ignoring, oh, I like, I like this word, ignoring God's way of doing things that characterize human society. When you love the world, you are ignoring the foundation of the scripture. Like if you have a problem, just go to Google, you go to your, your, your social media, your friends. And that's good as well. I'm not saying literally, technically, that's wrong. But if you prioritize them, you ignore the ways of God. Hallelujah. I mean, that's literally loving the world and the things of the world. And that's not the will of God. Again, again, not just the word, but anything in the world. So the author was emphasizing the idea that this world is really evil. It's sure, it's evil, this world. But we are here, we and we are here in this world so that we will be we will shed that light that we have received from God. And being lighthouse fellowship, we are commissioned by God to light our life in this dark world. Hallelujah. And do the right thing. Hallelujah. And this is so that so much warning against that just love about the beauty of the world God created. No, it doesn't mean that way. Instead, it is more of warning against loving the material things which characterize the world system. We can appreciate and enjoy everything that we have, the world offers, the technology. It doesn't mean that when you do that, we're loving the world. No, but we are, when we put ourselves into those things and we can't live without those, that's loving the world because these things are temporary. So that's why even our cars, even our homes and gadgets and status that goes with all of them can really make our hearts at home in this world. But even without this, we can still live our lives to the fullest because we have Jesus Christ in our hearts. Hallelujah. Even without those things, we can still live our lives. Even without the offers of the world, we will not be pressured by it. So we will still do the right thing because uh, from that particular passage in verse 15, there's another principle and another se sentence. If anyone loves the world, the love for the Father is not in him. As if the, this passage is trying to judge our love for the Father because we are dearly loving too much this kind of world. So meaning, if the world, if we love more this world, this earth, the love for the Father is not in them. How do we apply those things? We should prioritize our love for God. I'm not preparing to Sunday service. I'm not preparing to an activity in the church. No, I'm not preparing to coming to church. I'm preparing to your personal life, to our personal life, even to our young people, that you are prioritizing God. Loving Him with all of our hearts. This is just prioritizing God in your own daily lives. Not just Sunday. Sunday is just part of the week. Maybe that's devoted for going to church. But don't get me wrong. I'm not referring to you just go to church every Sunday. This, this is not what we're trying to say. Again, we are elaborating the principle that simply love for the world is incomparable with the love for the Father. You don't compare that. It's beyond our... That therefore, if one claims to love God yet loves the world, there is something wrong with his claim to love God. Throughout histories, um, Christians have dealt with magnetic full of world in different ways. What does it mean? As one time, it was thought that if we were really committed Christians and really wanted to love God instead of the world, you would live human society and live as a monk or a nun or a desolate in a desolate monastery 
There were times like that. And there was this one group of individuals in Pennsylvania uh, wherein they separated themselves from the world and they developed a small community. There's grocery and everything is there. And this one particular leader of the group would just go to the world and buy some stuff for the community so that the community would not be contaminated and see other stuff in the real world. So they really as dissociated themselves from the reality of the world. But that's not what we're trying to, to, to do. Because whether we like it or not, we cannot, we cannot like, separate ourselves from the realities of the world, from the pressures of the world. But what it means to be a Christian is to not really love the world in such a way that we do the things. Meaning the approach is to seek not out of the world. Like the first, there's a problem here is that we bring the world within us into our own self. And the problem is that Jesus intended us to be in the world but not the world. Again, God wants us to go to the world but not to be in the world. Associate, not the word in. But go to is to evangelize the world but not in, meaning associate and live. Hallelujah. So that's why as far as, as far as understanding is concerned, especially this verse 16, this is more elaborated statement. For everything in the world, the lash of the flesh, the lash of the eyes, and the pride of life is here. This three formula is the same formula that the serpent used to Adam and Eve during the fall in Genesis chapter 3. And the same word or the same formula that the enemy and this world is giving to us. The lust of the flesh, it feels good. The lust of the eyes, wow, it's wonderful. And the pride of life, if I have this, I'll be, wow, I'll have this thing. That's pride of life and lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes. Again, comes not from the Father, but from the world. Hallelujah. The idea behind the pride of life and everything here is that who lives for superiority over others. That's peer pressure. If you want to be superior than this one or than that, that person, you have to live like this. And we need to understand that we don't have to compromise and to live that way because we are Christians. We are believers of God that we have, we are, we have been receiving the calling from God to really be the light of this world, not just to live this world, but also uh, be the light of this world. Verse 17 says, the part one is the world and its desires passes away. So instead of indulging and investing to the things of this world, just like Jesus said in his conversation with the disciples, do not love the world, same. Because everything passes away. Heaven and earth will pass away. It's just the same principle that you don't just invest the things that are temporary. Invest the, to the things that are and eternal. Hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, especially young people, when you start doing what is right and not loving the things of this world, I believe that that will for sure go along the way and for sure eternal. Um, what we're doing for our kids, especially nowadays, even though some of our kids or even all of the kids are sometimes noisy or like they, they, they will do everything. And then I think I, re I heard that some of our teachers, our volunteer teachers are having a hard time of controlling the kids. It's okay. They're just kids. We can also disciple them and thank God because even they're just like that. They're very active and everything. I believe with all my heart that what, what we are teaching the kids, for sure, as part of the scripture, they will not depart from it. And they will, they will see themselves that every Sunday, or not just every Sunday, that this church, that we go to the church, that every Sunday we, we fellowship with God. And they will not depart from that kind of culture and idea and teaching from the Word of God. And ultimately, I mean, even when we go out, just like Sunday uh, or party, but I'm, I'm talking especially with 
the context all over the world, not just here in North America, especially in Canada. It's different context. But what I'm saying is, there are moments wherein when we value and evaluate our love for the, the word, the world, and our love for God, it will like just come to a point wherein, yeah, really, I, I love the Lord, but I can't do that. I love the Lord, but I can't go to church. Uh, I love the Lord. You love the Lord, but you're doing that. So it's a testimony. It's, it's a more, more of a testament of what we're saying that we love the Lord and we love the world. Hallelujah. So that's, that's the idea of do not love the world, brothers and sisters. We can overcome this prayer pressure and deal with it by doing what is right. The first one is do not, and the second one is the do things. And this is doing the will of the Lord. Do not love the world. Now is do the will of the Lord. One particular passage is the world and its desires is there, pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. It's so interesting that when you read the passage 15, 16, and part 1 of 17, it's all of explaining the loving of the world. But John just dedicated the single, not the entire sentence, a single praise, the second part of this verse 17, to explain whoever does the will of God lives forever. That's a contrast with the passing away of the world's desires. And it's the, the whole thing. So, we will try to understand that peer pressure is crucial. Peer pressure is real. It's there, but it's not forever. Meaning, we can deal with it. How to deal with it? By not loving the world and doing the will of God. Hallelujah. Here, it, this stands in strong contrast of this passing world. Because some things are forever and it's much wiser to invest our lives to which cannot be lost. And that is doing the will of God. When you choose to do the will of God, for sure, even the pressures of the world, the pressures of your peers, your friends, the social media, and everything around us will be overcome, not just dealt with, but overcome it. And we will be overcomers, hallelujah, by just simply doing the will of God. It's easier said than done, but when it comes to applying the will of God, it's hard. It takes a lot of decision and uh, effort to do it, hallelujah. But we believe that when it comes to understanding this, we will be, God will always sustain us. God will always there, the Holy Spirit, His presence will always guide us. In the language of Apostle Paul, in his writing to Romans, he, there's this description of the will of God. Like doing the will of God, the question is, what is the will of God? Or what is it describes? In Romans, again, chapter 2, 1, 12, verse 2, I think I've shared the idea here. Again, then you will be able to grasp, to test, and approve what God's will is. And what God's will? What is God's will? And His will is good, bless, or pleasing, and perfect. Hallelujah. Let's, let's change the word good into a precious. Precious, pleasant, and perfect. That is God's will. So if you want to just deal with the pressures of life, especially our young people, choose the will of God. Because the will of God will lead you to a precious, a pleasant, and perfect will. He won't let you realize, like, experience those things that are not precious. He will not let you experience those things. But He will allow you, or probably, yeah, same word, let you. But He will also give you strength to overcome and ultimately embrace His perfect will upon each and every one of us. Regardless of what the Lord may ask us to do, we will find in the end that it is good when we embrace and do the will of God. Even though people are not really doing the will of God, even though we're just minority of this world or this community that just doing the will of God, still do it. 
Hallelujah. Because God will never ask to do anything that is not for our eternal good. It is for our own good. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, doing the will of God. Ultimately, even though you don't see the, uh, the initial or right away effect of doing the will of God, ultimately later on you will quote Romans 8.28. What is Romans 8.28? For all, uh, for all things work together for the good of those who love Him according to His good purpose. All, we, all things work together for the good of those who love Him. So even though the effect of our doing God's will is not yet there, just continuously doing it, continuously embracing that. Hallelujah. It's there, it's there. Uh, don't be afraid of the will of God for your life because it is really good. Hallelujah. It is really precious. It's pleasant. It's pleasing. It's a sense that when His will is revealed to us, it is something that we are made willing to. For sure, God will allow us to experience that. And God will allow us to embrace that wonderful thing. Hallelujah to each and every one of us. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to this that when every one of us are decided to do the will of God, even though, again, as mentioned, minority or just, be, just selective or just a few of us are still doing it, even in your work or in your job or your career or your workplace, you're the only one doing it. Still do it. Hallelujah. Because in front of God, that is something. Through the experience of life, we believe that God grows us and matures us so that when he call when his call comes and his will is revealed we are equipped and ready for whatever he calls us to do and if his will seems for sometimes unacceptable and there are times most of the times when we re when god reveals his will because we are reluctant or we are limited to understand and grasp his will that's un understandable for us but even it is unacceptable for us, hallelujah, we, we are just overlooking something that He is trying to show us. And He will never lead us to a place when we are not ready to go. So that's why let us continue to do His will. Let us continue to obey His will. And I mean, as far as understanding the will of God, which is precious, pleasant, and perfect, we can say that nothing could add to God's plan that would improve it. It's already perfect. You don't have to choose it whether you do it or not. Do it because it's perfect. Don't think twice or don't Google it. Just do the right thing. Do the will of God because when God reveals His will, it is because, hallelujah, something is good and we need to realize that God since the end of the matter before the matter begins does it make sense if sometimes it's not comfortable for us because we're, we're just human we're not that kind of grasping the whole thing but if we trust and obeying his will he will always be there obstacles will go he knows where the provisions that are that he has ready already placed along the way even though you don't see it right our topic of waiting, the ghosting thing, even though we don't see it, Lord, I will not do it because it, I think as far as my, my understanding is concerned, there's, it's not acceptable. But you still choose to do the will of God for sure. Hallelujah. Along the way, God already provided the provision and everything. His plan cannot be improved upon, but it is, must be followed for our for our, for our victory and our blessing, and we can be in no better place than the perfect will of our God in our lives. Hallelujah. So that's why, brothers and sisters, dealing this peer pressure is something. It, it needs to be done. And we need to act right away. And it is, it's not easy, especially when we talk about struggles of our kids, our young people. And if you have struggle, you can, yeah, you can boldly and mention it to your your parents. And if you need something, you need someone, somebody who can just listen to you. Uh, I'm not saying that your parents are busy 
they'll be there for you. You're, you just have to be open to them. Our church is open as well. You, you can share your, your, your pressures, everything. And we believe that we are not just here for to point that I'm good and you're not. I'm mature and you're not. No, we are here specifically as pastors, not just me, but every leader who's in the church, every one of us are here for a purpose of bringing and embracing the love and acceptance and forgiveness of one another, especially the pressures that we have, the pressures that we are facing nowadays. And we will do this together, right? We are into this understanding because as far as the Word of God is concerned, as far as being as a church is concerned, this is the will of God that we should just be expressing that concern to one another and not just judging one another. Hallelujah. Uh, my encourage to our parents nowadays especially is that if we see our kids that are struggling, just sit down with them and listen. Take time to listen to them. And we all know that we will for sure benefit from it later on because um, though it's not that hard, it's not that easy. It takes time, especially with, with uh, like character or personalities and things like that. But with God's help, we will be able to just do the will of God and deal this prayer pressure that our young people, young kids are experiencing nowadays. And we would like, we would don't, we don't want these kids, our kids, to be specific, to go to the world and find solution. We would like to allow them to just like find that answer within the four corners of our houses and then our home and embrace the presence of God when we do that. Hallelujah. If there's a problem, we just sit down and pray about it. There's no automatic answer, but we believe that God is doing something when, when we, we decide to do the will of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So do the will of the Lord. Again, do not love the world. And do the will of the Lord because when we do that, hallelujah, we will for sure be overcomers of this. Today that we should be separate ourselves, I mean, to, to deny that we should separate ourselves from the desires of the world when we, they seek out and would do the this generation and all who are living today is like this service, like separating ourselves. It should be faced realistically dealing with it and this also means true that we face it with equality realistic knowledge of god's power to redeem those pressures that we encounter hallelujah and the understand that we should be washed and be sanctified and we justified in the name of jesus christ and by the spirit of god to lay to this reality we must become fully aware of the distant distinct separation of internal value between temporary satisfaction of this world uh, found in this arms of this our peers and never changing steadfast love of our god like one thing remains everything the love of god will still remain to each and every one of us hallelujah hallelujah easy or not the choice must be made and the burden for older generation is to live out a life of faithful discipleship. I think when we live our lives, especially the, young, the older generation, as parents, if we live a life, a life of like really doing the will of God, our kids will follow. If we are living our lives, I'm including myself, I'm also struggling with that kind of thing. Not just doing the will of God, but also discipleship. With, with my own family. That's part of it because we're still human. I'm not exempted to the fact, to the reality of bell pressures. I feel that even, even nowadays. But the challenge for us is to be faithful to, to the Lord and thus be faithful disi discipling ourselves and even our kids. And through their, their, our example, to equip our new generation with what they need to make the right call and deal with the prayer pressure. Amen. Let's bow our heads momentarily. I would like to pray for you, pray for everyone. And this prayer also is, I mean, I'm part of this. I'm beneficiary of this prayer. God, thank you for allowing us to be here. 
face to face with your word. Thank you because at the end of the day, Lord, we need you all of our lives. We need you in all aspects of our lives. Lord, we feel the reality of peer pressure, the reality of the pressures of the world, the pressures that our young people, our kids are facing. And for sometimes, Lord, we, we, we deal with it with our own experiences. But our experiences may not be the same as their experiences. But we believe that we have the same solution and that is going to you. And when we do the will of God and not loving the world, Lord, it will allow us, open us to the wisdom that you're about to, to give to each and every one of us and to deal this peer pressure that we are facing. Not just, even, our, even us as parents, we experience peer pressure. So as with the kids, so as the younger generation. And we believe, Lord, that you are not just blessing us with eternal life uh, after we left here on earth or after we die. We believe that eternal life here is, eternal life is even here on earth. We can experience this. And Lord, dealing with it, dealing the things of this world and doing the right things as we deal the pill pressure is hallelujah. Just embracing your great plan. Lord, those who are struggling with the peer pressure, uh, maybe our young people or our, 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 our parents, all, all of us are experiencing this in the name of Jesus. Lord, allow us to be decisive of the fact that to, to embrace your will and not the things of the world or the things that we see in social media or the, the things that we see by the principles of this world. But Lord, cause us, Lord, to just navigate ourselves to the very word of God, to your word, to the overall eternal principle. Hallelujah. Just simply doing the will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, because your will always has this precious and perfect and pleasing to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. And continue to open the, the eyes of our hearts so that we may be able to see your will every day of our lives and we will not be clouded with the things of this world and the solutions to our pressures and struggles especially to our kids and young people because we believe lord that you will when you open our eyes the eyes of our understanding lord that we will seek you with all of our hearts and we believe that this is not just more of a spiritual but you will open our eyes so that when we live this world, we are living in this world, not loving the world, hallelujah, we will impact, Lord, and we will just be contagious with the fact of the way you live here on earth and others as well with the faithfulness and with your goodness and your love, hallelujah, hallelujah, and with the understanding, especially for our kids and our young people. Lord, continue to embrace those people who are experiencing peer pressure and allow them to just to um, cause them, Lord, to share it with their parents and share it with their loved ones, share it with, um, especially be honest with you, with their communication and their relationship with you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Hallelujah. I believe that you will do something great uh, to each and every one of us, even after this message, Lord, and for the rest of the message in this series for this month. Thank you. We just honor you and appreciate what you're doing in us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah.